This is Chris. I'm Priscilla. Joining us is Barley, our sausage. And this is our home in the making. Thanks for watching. Welcome aboard. What's up, guys? So today we're down at the Brent Reservoir behind us, and we've been invited to just check out. A little bit of behind the scenes action uh, that is looked obviously the canals are looked after by a lot of volunteers and some staff and basically last year CRT asked us if we'd be interested in learning a little bit more about the canals and taking a look behind the scenes which we obviously are <laughs> yeah obviously this is an interest to us because now we've got the boat and we thought we'd bring you guys along and show you something that the public doesn't see normally yeah something that you can't really see all the time something that's not accessible to to everybody and we've been lucky enough to be chosen to come and have a look be part of the behind the scenes <laughs> something that you don't see every day to make sure that the canals work at the way that they work so you know it runs smoothly and all the maintenance that needs to be done is done in winter time so we are here well, saying that, it's still pretty sunny, which is quite nice. Yeah. It's, I can't believe how empty that thing's looking. I can't, understand, I can't wait to find out exactly... What we're getting ourselves into today. What especially we're seeing. as we've actually had two storms, like, recently. So where's all this water? Like, and uh, is that some of the issue that all this water is now missing and has flowed downstream? Welcome to the behind-the-scenes journey of the Brent Reservoir, located near the iconic Wembley Stadium in London. This hidden gem of tranquility is a surprising oasis within the bustling city. After its last maintenance project in 2002, the reservoir is now due for a thorough checkup to ensure its continued operation and preservation. The project commenced in November 2023, and we invite you to join us on this exploration as we witness the gradual decrease in water levels and learn about the significance of the reservoir in our canal systems. As we embark on this journey, we witnessed the passage of time through a mesmerizing time-lapse video. Over the past two months, the water level of the reservoir has been intentionally lowered to prepare for the scheduled maintenance work. This gradual process minimizes the impact on the environment and allows for a comprehensive inspection of the reservoir's condition. We step onto the reservoir shores and are greeted by a team of dedicated professionals, including engineers, Hi, ecologists, and canal experts. They explain the significance of the reservoir and its relationship with the surrounding canal systems. The Brent Reservoir not only serves as a valuable water source but also plays a crucial role in maintaining the ecological balance of the area. What we have here are, are five siphons which are designed to take away excess water from this side of the, 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 the head wall onto down the into the river Brent. So if, if the water level naturally reached that point, mm -hmm. and, and, and we wouldn't let it reach that point, if it did, there's five of these siphons that are sighted at different levels so they don't all kick in at once okay. and, and the water would then come up and over and then out go to this side and oh, flow out down and right into the river, river Brent. Okay. What you've got here, so this is the, the valve tower, okay. which contains the controls for the, the, the rods and the, the chains which, which then operate the sluices. So the, the bit that lets the water through the head wall, through the dam. I see they've got like the chains and everything, so obviously back in the day that used to still work well, that's how it works today. As that's, well. how, that's how it works today. I mean, it's a fantastic bit of engineering. Um, it can still be manually operated if necessary, but it's, it's fully automated now. Okay. Um, and that's, that's the work that we're doing here this winter. Uh, once in a generation uh, operation to repaint below the water line, replace the, the rods and chains, okay. and just make sure that everything is working as it should be for another 25 years or more. Uh, all right, 
so basically once you get rid of all this water now once that's completely emptied out then scaffolding everything gets put up here yep. and this all gets repainted and everything correct and is it specific paint do you have to do it on a specific day yeah it's, it's very specialist technical paint so it's really important to do it in the right weather conditions because of a very specific dew point that it has okay. to be applied at so we you are at the mercy. The perfect day. <laughs> we we have been at the mercy of the elements uh, for the duration of this project. Okay. From the point where we started dewatering, we've had several named storm events. Yes. And when did you start dewatering this, this specific reservoir? So it was it was uh, tail end of November, start of December, okay. that we finally started to to, to draw down to properly. Draw. Okay. Um, and then and, all the storms kicked in. And then the storm. So <laughs> it was it was a case of you know two steps forward, three wow. steps back. At, at, so then obviously um, with all the rain and everything did it rise again or did it carry on yeah so the, the, the morning after one of those storm events the, the the water was back up by a whole meter wow. on where it had been the day before okay. so, so that's why you say you're taking three steps back because now you have to drain all of that all over again yeah and it's and and, and well that's frustrating it's really important that we do that process gradually yeah. uh, and, and make sure that we are sort of carrying out all yeah. the the environmental improvements along the way and considering the fact that this is a site of special scientific yes. interest so it's it's not as simple as emptying a bath <laughs> it's a very large bath well i can imagine yeah. it's a lot of water it is. <laughs> wow okay so we've learned some interesting facts that's for sure today um so basically this area is where they are now finishing off they've got a little bit of water left and some fish um, so I don't know if they're going, are they going to be still fishing out some fish today? Do you think we'll get a that, spot on them? Yes, they, they, they have been working on that today. Okay. So I don't know, I don't know how successful they've been. I don't know if it's okay. the one that got away or whether they <laughs> caught a big one. Certainly if, if past experience is anything to go by, there's some pretty okay. big fish in there. And e even, even now, uh, weeks and weeks after, I mean, we're now, I think five, five or six weeks after we started the, the fish rescue, mm -hmm. we're still rescuing still fish. Rescue. We expected that process to be finished before Christmas. Do we have fish coming past now? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Can we film them? <laughs> Can we have a look? What you caught? Cream. <gasps> wow. Hello fishies. Enjoy oh, wow. your new home. <laughs> That's fun. amazing. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Good fish left behind. <laughs> <laughs> All the anglers out there are yeah. Uh, Very envious. Very envious <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they wish they were here right now, but no fishing license. No required. fishing license. <laughs> Simultaneously, ecologists and environmental experts conduct surveys to assess the impact of the reservoir on the local flora and fauna. They monitor bird populations, study vegetation growth, and analyze water quality to ensure the reservoir remains a healthy and sustainable ecosystem. Environmental factors, weather events can, can, can cause there to be a loss of fish. So what we're able to do is take these fish, replenish areas where there's a shortage of those species. And when we uh, eventually re-establish a uh, fish population here, we'll take an opportunity to, to uh, lose some of the invasive species and repopulate with, with something that's more in balance with uh, this site of special scientific okay, So they interest. have been moved into specific areas and... Absolutely, so wow. they will test for parasites in the to, to make sure that we're not taking a parasite somewhere else on the, on the network. Actually, I think it's on the, the fish were pretty healthy here. Okay, so parasites, if they did have parasites, they would go to another place that did have parasites? Already had so that, that parasite. None of the other fish yeah. die or... Okay. Absolutely, so, so it's really So the environmental important. thing on this is really, really intense. You have to make sure everything is, is good in all your ecosystems, right? Absolutely, yeah. and, and the the, the dewatering, the draining of the reservoir, that's a, a pretty scientific process as well. So, you know, they're, they're constant sort of monitoring of the, the water quality. So they, they, they take samples, they measure it for something called turbidity, which essentially is measuring how much silt is in the water. Because as you get lower down, you get into the murky depths of the reservoir, you don't want to take that silt through the sluices and into the river. This looks very interesting. Is this something that they used to use back in the day, or is this still used today? Yeah. So, so this is the the, the old capstan that they would use to manually operate okay. the, the, the sluices. So, the, the machinery hasn't fundamentally changed. It's had electrics fitted to it. Okay. But if push came to shove, 
and you really would need to shove because this is a heavy <laughs> bit of equipment, then this it's, could be used. Is it cast to, iron? What it's, is, yeah. it's really heavy. It's I mean, really, you, you really can heavy. see that yeah. it's, it's, it's 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 going to take a couple of guys to to, <laughs> to, to pick that up just to just to manoeuvre it into position. Never mind right. to, to actually move it. So okay. they were made of Stelmer stuff back in the day, clearly. Wow. So there's all sorts of fantastic mm -hmm. vintage equipment, some of which it's a mystery what it actually does, but you can see you know, how technical the, the data that was being collected even uh, 190 years ago when, when this reservoir was built, just to, just to check that everything was at the right level. Working the way it should be. Yeah. They were obviously wow. checked the monitoring the water, just making a note of the, the, wa the water level like periodically, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. The reservoir is essentially a dammed section of the, the River Brent, so it's fed by the Silk Stream and the Dollis Brook, which meet here and yeah. fill up the, the reservoir naturally. So it's, it's an incredible feat of engineering. The first stage of the maintenance project involves a thorough assessment of the reservoir's infrastructure. Skilled engineers inspect the dam, sluices, and control structures, ensuring they are in optimal condition. Any signs of wear, erosion, or potential issues are carefully documented for further analysis. Our teams are constantly monitoring water levels across our 2,000 mile network um, and all of that can be done remotely, electronically, via uh, screens like this or people are working on their laptops, constantly checking that everything is as it should be. What you can see emerging from the head bank uh, in the foreground there is the, the Brent feeder and that actually predates the Brent reservoir. The reservoir was built to feed the regions canal um, but actually the the first work was that was to feed the the Grand Union Canal or Grand okay. Junction Canal as it was then um, and so there was lots of talk about building a reservoir by by them but actually it was the Regents Canal Company who were the ones who eventually got round to doing it after experiencing water shortages much further downstream but the Brent feeder was 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 built before the reservoir to take uh, the water all the way down through Willesden uh, and, and feeds into the... Does that go all the way down to Brentford Lockton? That goes down to the, the Paddington arm of the Grand Union okay. Canal at Lower Place. Wow, okay, so our boats actually work quite close to that. Uh, it's quite interesting to see the source of the water yeah. and what actually feeds it. Well, this is, this is what people don't necessarily they think about canals. They assume the water is just there. Just the water there. is only there because an engineer, sometimes 250 years ago, thought about how it was going to carry the water all yeah. the way from a reservoir into the I know, the people canal. take for granted. You just walk along the canal and the water's there. You presume it's like a river, yeah. but without man and without engineers behind the scenes, there was nothing yeah. there. I, and without that constant maintenance, and that's the other thing that people need to remember, we yeah. need to be there to maintain these structures, to make sure that we're maintaining the culverts, the aqueducts, the bridges, the locks, that keep the whole network moving. Our boat's actually uh, 1910. Okay. Built, so it's quite got a bit of history itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's why a lot of our viewers are interested. It was an old steam dredger. Okay. Uh, that was converted into a houseboat in 1950 and then abandoned for many years. Okay. And we're at the moment in the process of restoring it. So we understand engineering is very important. And that's why we thought we'd come out today and just see exactly how the canal yeah, functions. But, you know, this is the other thing about the canal network. It's, it's living history. It's not pointing at something in a museum and saying this used to do something. It's All still, our network, our 250-year-old network, still does this stuff every day. And we it's maintain the heart of Britain, really. 2,000 miles of navigation wow. every day of the year. It's it's incredible. It's it's really a feat of engineering, and it's so it's so vital to the lifeblood of London, and not just London, the entire country. It links everything together, and it's still crucial. I know you mentioned earlier something about um, how they're still laying uh, fiber optics and stuff along the, the towpath. Yeah, I mean. We, you think about the, the route that the canals took two centuries ago, it's the fastest way, it's the shortest route between Each major city. locations, whether it's London and Birmingham or further north. And so, even today, modern utility companies have cottoned on to that. So we are, they're using our towpaths to, to lay utility cables underneath. That provides a vital source of income for the Canal and River Trust as well as a charity. The maintenance project also focuses on enhancing the reservoir's surrounding environment. Volunteers join the efforts, participating in cleanup activities to remove litter and debris found along the shoreline. 
Have you found anything interesting? Um, what have you come across? Well, last time we, we dropped the reservoir level by a couple of metres just to, to, to carry out a survey to see what, what needed to be done. We found 1,300 tyres which we removed. Wow. Um, so it's clear that people have treated the Brent Reservoir badly. It's in this really pressure building environment. Over there you've got the M1, the North Circular. At the top you've got the Edgeware Road. So, you know, it's, it's bounded on, on all sides by a really sort of busy environment. Over there you've got Wembley. Um, you know, so, so, so many people obviously appreciate this place, but a lot of people over the years have treated it pretty badly. Um, the things that we've found this and that time... And that was just removing just some of the water, not some even of the all water. of the water. Yeah, so, so this time we, we knew that there was going to be uh, uh, some, some nasties under the, under the, the surface. Yeah. Um, what we actually found were all sorts of things that you might imagine, like discarded um, hire bikes, okay. um, line bikes, the e-bikes. The e yeah. Really strange things, we found discarded safes, we found parking meters, um, we found World War II ammunition oh. and, and casing. So so really lots and lots of strange place. things that, that are, are you know quite a fascinating insight into okay. the uses of the Brent Reservoir uh, over the, the centuries really. It's you know it's wartime history when they were uh, flying sea launching seaplanes from the, the Brent the Reservoir. Reservoir. Yeah okay. so you know th there's a real story to tell above the water and below. Yeah. See, with CRT, everyone is volunteered to come and take that rubbish away, or do you need professionals to come and do it, or a how does it work? So it's a combination of the two, so okay. we've, I think, had 900 volunteer hours wow. of, of litter clearance already okay. on this project. But our volunteers can only do so much, we can only have them clearing uh, above the, the, the like shoreline, areas. really, okay. um, because this, this is deep mud, deep silt, it's dangerous, and people yeah. absolutely shouldn't think that they could get out on this. What we've done is we've had a, a crowdfunder which has allowed us to pay contractors okay. to go out and, and, and carry out more extensive clear-ups of that okay. sort of bigger stuff that we're finding, the bicycles, the safes, okay. uh, and do that in a proper and then uh, have, safe way. You, you say with the crowdfunding, have you got a specific amount that you want to, um, like what your goal is? Well, we, we set a target of £15,000, which we okay. thought was incredibly ambitious, but we're nearly there. We're at about £12,000, so so nice. close to hitting okay. that target. And what that money means is it, it enables us to do as much as we can in this really precious window of time. Okay. So between us starting the drawdown of the water mm -hmm. and, and revealing some of this rubbish, to the short period of time when the, when the reservoir is going to be completely drained mm -hmm. and we can see the full extent of the problem, yeah. we want to get as much of that cleared Clear. as possible because as soon as the work is finished, the, the reservoir will be refilled okay. and the opportunity to, to, to do that and you will want to, be gone. Yeah, you want to try and get rid of everything while you have the opportunity to do it. We can't do everything, but we want to do as, as much, much as, as possible. humanly possible. Yeah. This is a site of special scientific interest. It's this absolutely precious uh, wild space in the heart of, 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 of urban London and you know we've got to protect You've it. You've got to protect it, exactly. It's really important that if people can contribute that they do but you know we don't just need people to contribute money if people can contribute their time, their time there's well. volunteer events we have a campaign at the moment to volunteer by water okay. so again if you go to our website and click on the volunteering tab you will see all sorts of opportunities near you type in your postcode you will find events coming up you so can actually can get stuck in and, and help us help okay. us clean up the reservoir so guys if you are interested in helping out in any way please do click down on the links below uh, let's try and help the canal trust any way we can every little bit helps not just in money please come out and spend the day get out in the sun enjoy the weather just like enjoy the nature um, as i say the links are down below please click them and uh, see if you can help out the amount of stuff that has been found while emptying this reservoir is absolutely it's, it's shocking but interesting at the same time there are parking meters they found safes these rubber tires and everything that you see here now is being collected that they're finding and then they'll get contractors in to come in all at once and then obviously just remove whatever's left in this area so I mean, it's still quite a lot. It's a huge task, but we've, we've got a great opportunity to, 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 to really make it. a difference this time. Yeah. So, 
I think we, I think everybody knew the scale of the challenge, and it's just a case of making sure that we get as much can done before the, done. before the reservoir refills. I mean, it's. Hey, we can even check out where that's from. So it's location 5201. <laughs> <laughs> we can go onto the app and you can find out exactly where that, the source of that uh, parking meter is. This is absolutely the worst of humans' behaviour towards the, this triple SI site. But yeah. come over here and I'll show you one of the best things that we've done recently. And that's the, the floating uh, nesting platforms that we've installed oh, for a cool. population of great so it's now yes, sitting on the, the bed of the reservoir. Right. So this is what ordinarily be floating. And what this is, is a, essentially a, a, a nesting area that has a pond in the middle. You can't quite see from here, but there's a okay. gap in the middle and it's fenced all the way around. And the fencing stops the larger birds and the predators from getting in. Okay. The great crested grebe dips under the water, emerges in the pool in the middle, and then can nest on the aquatic plants. Wow. That was installed about November 2022. They were all just tiny little plug plants uh, installed between the sort of coir matting, um, and they were designed to, to provide this habitat for the, the great crested grebe, which is one of the named species on the Triple SI designation. So it's really important that we not only protect the population yeah. that we have here, but encourage uh, growth in that population and give them somewhere to, to, to nest. Yeah, so thank you very much for uh, taking us today and showing us a little bit about the canal and the, the, the reservoir and a little bit behind the scenes of what's involved in the engineering that people don't get to see on a, and like you said, once in a generation. Yeah, well, you're very welcome and thanks very we much for showing, showing an interest. <laughs> so that's uh, about a wrap for today. We've learned so much. Very, very, very busy day with lots of information. It's been like, it's been a serious eye opener just on the water management side alone. Uh, what goes into making sure that the canals continue to function and that they don't run out of water. The maintenance on everything is just wow. And the fact that they've <laughs> been like draining this reservoir for three months basically just so they can do like a month's worth of work and then try and fill it up again. And everything that goes into it, the fish, the birds, everything regarding the environment. They test the water, the, the ecological parts. Yeah, it's just been mad. There's just so much information. So I hope you guys learned a lot because we definitely did. And the fact that this all happens behind the scenes, we feel very privileged that we were able to see it and to able to go through everything and learn this much. So yeah, I hope you guys did too. See parts of the network that you don't normally see as yeah. a normal person. <gasps> Oops, I nearly fell over there. <laughs> it's a little bit windy. Yeah, so behind the scenes, things that you wouldn't normally see in your every day-to-day -day life if you live on the canals. Um, so it's nice, it's interesting to see how everything works and that it doesn't just happen willy-nilly. There's always someone behind it making sure that Turning everything those runs smoothly. Massive cogs. <laughs> But yeah, that's a, a wrap for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.